so today I am here at my mom's house because I came down for Mother's Day and I am right outside her art room and I'm going to be filming a video today with special guests. Let's go see who it is. Can you guess? Mom. Hi YouTubers! Today we're going to be reviewing an assortment of sketchbooks because you all asked for a sketchbook review. Hi guys! Hi! <laughs> this is my mom. This is Alice. <laughs> as you well know. Um, so I am done with my mom for Mother's Day and I really wanted to film a video with her because if you watch my videos you know I mention my mom a lot and she'll comment down below in the videos too a lot of times of advice and um, recommendations and stuff because she is much more wise in the ways of art than I am, <laughs> at least when it comes to watercolors. So today we're going to be filming um, a video that has been requested in the past which is a sketchbook review video and I thought I would film it with my mom because that way you can get two people's opinions and she's tried different sketchbooks that I have and so you can get more a wide variety of sketchbooks. So without further ado, let's start reviewing. Okay, so we're going to start out with... Is this, is this your favorite? Are these your favorite sketchbooks? Yes. They're my favorite sketchbooks. Too. Yes. So these are the moleskins. They're pretty famous. Everyone's heard of a moleskin. Um, we're going to be showing you the regular sketchbook and the watercolor one and telling you a little bit about them. So um, we're in my mom's craft room, so these are all her sketchbooks for the most part. All mine are in like where I live, so you know. This is the regular sketchbook. This is what it looks like all wrapped up and packaged. It has 104 pages. Top quality heavy, heavy acid free paper. It's five by eight and a half inches, eight and a quarter inches, and it has an expandable inner pocket. And it does not say the page weight, but they're pretty thick, heavy pages. They're a slightly off white cream color and they're slightly shiny. So they're a little bit harder to do watercolor on. If you want to do watercolor, I do highly recommend the watercolor moleskin sketchbook. I'll take that over to my mom because she uses them a lot more than I do. And why don't you tell them a little bit more about the watercolor moleskin? Okay, the watercolour moleskins, um, all these moleskins come in several sizes. The two I use the most are the pocket size and this is their, called their large size. So this is the eight and a quarter by five inch one and this is the pocket size which is five and a half by three and a half inches. Um, the reason I like these is I love the paper in them. It's really good for watercolour sketching and there's no ring binding so there's nothing to get trapped in your purse. So I carry these around all the time. Um, they work great for watercolour, the pages don't buckle very easily. Um, you can get some really good effects and it, it, the watercolour just kind of shines out of it. You can do good wet and wet techniques for this one too. And then this is just a little comparison. This is a watercolour on the regular moleskin compared to the watercolour on the watercolour moleskin. You can see the colours are a lot more vibrant over here because it is a watercolour paper. Um, I find that if you're going to watercolour on the regular moleskin, you really need to saturate the page with water beforehand because um, it kind of, I don't know, it just does It's a little thing. resistant, isn't it? Yeah. It's a bit like painting on wax paper yeah, for a start. And then when it you is. get going, when it gets damp, then, then, it's fine. then it's okay. Yeah, but they are really, really great for pen sketching and pencil sketching, um, color pencil, all of that. These guys are great for that, but for watercolor, I would definitely recommend these. The only thing that I personally don't like about the moleskin watercolors is that they open landscape. Um, because I primarily draw people, I really prefer things that open portrait, but since she likes landscape, drawings it kind of works out it's good for her <laughs> and um as with all moleskins they all <laughs> as with all moleskins they have a little ribbon so you can mark your place and all moleskins also have this handy dandy pockets you love the pockets. in the back you can like store stuff in there so the actual moleskin sketchbooks are really great for travel sketchbooks if you want to stick stuff in them like your tickets and photos and stuff like that just because like i said they are really really strong paper so those are the moleskin sketchbooks, really great sketchbooks, kind of pricey, they range in price from about $14 to over $20 depending on your size and the paper that you're getting, but really good quality and the sketchbooks themselves come in both red and black. Okay, so the next books that we're going to be talking about are from Handbook Journal Company and this is a little bit of an interesting one because she does not like their watercolor ones and I actually do, so you'll get to see two different sides of the coin. But I will start off by talking about their journals. Um, you like their journals, right? 
I do. Yes. Like originals for so, pencil sketching. Yeah, their drawing pages, we both agree, are really, really nice. This is what they look like um, in the package. And they come in a bunch of different colors, and they actually have a really nice canvas, ooh, really nice canvas cover instead of the moleskins, which is like a faux leather. And I prefer, personally, I prefer the the canvas to the See. faux leather. And I prefer the faux leather because if I spill something on it, I can wipe it clean, whereas the fabric will get stained. Which I like because then it gets <laughs> history. They come in a bunch of different sizes. They have. I believe they have portrait ones. They do have portrait they have ones, portrait I think, ones. and they have the square they ones. They have square too. ones, which I really, really like. This is the landscape. It's five and a half inches by eight and a quarter inches, and it's 128 pages, acid free. It doesn't say the weight of the paper, but it just says heavyweight buff drawing paper with a good tooth. Um, this is one that is open. It has, again, an elastic band. These are a little bit more durable feeling than the Moleskine ones. They have rubber in them, so they kind of stick a little bit more. It also has... It also has a little bookmarker, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the paper is very different than the moleskin paper. It is still very thick and heavy, not quite as thick as the moleskin paper, but still very thick. But unlike the moleskin paper, it's not got a deep tooth, but it does have some texture to it. And it doesn't have that shiny, waxy feeling that the moleskin paper does. So if you wanna use watercolor on the actual sketching paper, it's gonna be a lot easier in this versus just the moleskin sketchbook. And this is kind of what watercolor looks like on this sketchbook. And again, it's good for ink, pencil, all of that good stuff. So if you prefer something that's a little bit more matte with a little bit more of a tooth, this might be a good bet. So these are the journals. I'm gonna let her talk about the watercolor sketchbook and I'll chime in with my two cents when she's done. Okay, so the watercolor version, this is the hand print watercolor journal. And these average out probably about a dollar more expensive than the moleskins in most places. And they do only come in the, the gray, gray color. Gray like all their color. journals come in different colors, but the watercolor is just yeah. in the gray. It doesn't have quite as many pages as the moleskin journal, and it's slightly more expensive. So the moleskin one is definitely the better value for money there. The paper is, it's quite heavyweight paper again. Um, acid free, bright white. I didn't like painting on this as much as the moleskin ones, mainly because it seems to be very a little bit smoother than the moleskin paper, not so textured. And I get a lot of blooms or cabbages when I try and do wet and wet techniques on this one. It's more difficult to do wet and wet. And it just cockles a little bit more than the moleskin does too. As an example, I painted a conker you see how uneven this was? I actually dropped some water in it deliberately um, because I was trying to get a smooth wash and I just couldn't on this paper. So then I had to deliberately texture it to cover it up. But you get a lot of runbacks on this paper. But for little like general sketches, if you're not, I, I use a lot of wet and wet techniques. So, but if you just do little pen and ink sketches, it's absolutely fine for that, not too bad at all. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, if you're a bit more of a detailed sketcher, um, you may like this a little bit more as it has less of a tooth, so it's gonna be easier with your pen. And so if you tend to prefer f smoother watercolor papers, this might be a good one for you over the moleskin. I do like these. I agree with my mom that the watercolor paper isn't quite as high quality as the moleskin ones, but I do really like it. Um, I feel like, I can put more stuff in it, if that makes sense. The moleskin watercolor paper feels so very watercolory that I'm afraid to do anything on it that's not watercolor. Right. Whereas this feels more like a combination between drawing paper and watercolor paper. So I feel like it's really good for a mixed media. The other thing that I did forget to mention, which I prefer to in these over the moleskin, is they have, what is this called? Pocket. A pocket <laughs> in the back. And this is a plastic pocket and it's got a little lid and it expands out. And I think I like this way more than the moleskin pocket. Um, it just feels more secure. So that is the handbook paper company sketchbooks pretty good depending on the way you use your watercolors you may want to go with this or the moleskin kind of depends but their sketchbooks for sure are great okay so the next one that we're going to be talking about is one of the sketchbooks that I like to use I only have the mixed media one here with me but you can get them in a bunch of different papers and they are by Strathmore they look like this and I think these are some of the nicest looking sketchbooks that you can get right now on the market. I can't afford them. <laughs> yeah, I always get, they're not that expensive. They are. They're not if you use a coupon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you can get these from, I get them from Michael's and I just use the 40% off coupon because without the 40% off coupon, I think they run over 20 bucks each. But with the 40% off coupon, you can get them really cheap. So 
um, and their Strathmore, and these are all their 500, they're their 500 series, and this is, like I said, this is the mixed media one, and they have a dark, very, very dark brown faux leather cover, but it feels really, really nice and mm -hmm. soft. The moleskin covers feel a little plasticky, yeah. but these feel really, really nice and soft. And they've got plenty of pages in them, and they're just really, really great quality. They're made out of the highest quality, the 500 line of Strathmore's um, highest quality of papers. And you can get them in mixed media. You can get them in a toned tan paper, a toned gray paper, watercolor paper, and I believe there's also a sketch paper or maybe a pastel paper. I honestly, I love them. They just, oh, they're just really, really nice. For the watercolor paper, I don't know if I talked about Strathmore watercolor paper in my paper video. I may have. Did. This is their 400 series, and so this has got their 500 series watercolor paper in, so it's one step above, but they're really, really good quality. I mean, their 400 series is what is like their artist quality and it's great itself so you know this is a cold press and it's pretty you know pretty heavy weight it's got a good tooth to it not too much not too little and they just hold up really really well and so if you want a watercolor journal with really high quality watercolor paper in it I would highly recommend taking a look at the Strathmore ones but make sure you use those coupons that Michaels and Hobby Lobby always have because that's the best way to get them at a good price thumbs up for these guys I like them a lot there is one other sketchbook that I use that she hasn't really tried, um, and I don't have it with me unfortunately, but they are called the Cache Earthbound Sketchbooks, and the specific one I'm talking about is the one that you can find at Barnes & Noble, and at Barnes & Noble it's called Sketchbook Craft, because Cache does have a couple other Earthbound Sketchbooks, and the one that I get is Spiral Bound, and it has brown craft paper inside, and I just want to mention it because I love those sketchbooks. I found them out because Will Terrell uses them over on his channel. So if you want to see what they look like and kind of see someone drawing on them, please, I would definitely go check out his channel. He's an amazing artist and super inspirational and yeah, he's awesome. But they are relatively cheap. The 5x7 is $8.95. They also have a 7x10. I can't remember exactly how much it is, but I want to say it's maybe around $13. And they're just really, really nice. They're spiral brown, so they lay flat. They've got a mid-weight paper, and it's a brown-toned paper. So it's really, really nice for doing whites and like shading on it. You can add highlights and add shading, and I just really like drawing on it. It makes me feel all cool and like I live in the olden days because I'm drawing on brown paper. So I highly recommend those if you're looking for a craft paper sketchbook. We have two more sketchbooks, and these are going to be a little bit cheaper sketchbooks. They're going to be the kind that you can find in a lot more stores, the big kind of spiral bound kind, so we have two of those. And I'm going to kind of let her talk more about these. She's used them a little more than I do. So these are those for you, Mum. Okay, the first one is the Pentallic Nature Sketch. It's natural white sheets, a percentage of the sale is donated to the American Wildlife Foundation, so that's a bonus. And um, it has 50 sheets of 130 pound paper in, so it's lovely thick paper. It's got a little bit of a tooth on it, like watercolour paper, and it actually takes watercolour pretty well. The thing to remember between proper watercolour paper and sketch paper is that your watercolours will dry a little bit duller on sketch paper, so be prepared for that. If you want glowing watercolours then you need a sketchbook with proper watercolour paper in. But um, for actual thickness it's wonderful. For mixed media it's great, too. it's lovely paper. Right, this is the Canson, what is it, the Canson Montvel Field or Media Book. There's 80 sheets of 90 pound cold press paper in here for mixed media. It's beautifully Beautifully bound, nice black cover, I like that. It's nice and sturdy too, it's very thick. It's got an, a, a nice textured paper to it, very fine texture. So it is going to cockle if you use watercolour on it. But for general sketching um, with pencil or pen and ink, and it'll probably take a little light wash over your pen and ink just fine without cockling, as long as you don't use very wet techniques on it. So it's nice, it's a nice book. I like it. Last ones we're going to talk about are funner watercolor sketchbooks, I guess. These are, there's two of them, and we're going to be comparing them. One is a little bit cheaper, you said. Yes. Um, and so these are going to be those kind of sketchbooks that you find that are the handmade watercolor paper. Usually, there's a bunch of different ones out there. They usually have kind of covers like this. We're going to be comparing two of them, and this one is going to be the Vincent Rossini, which I got her for, I think, her birthday or Christmas. And then this is 
It's called Handmade Watercolor Paper Journal, and you can get it at Hobby Lobby, so this is obviously the cheaper one. Um, she knows more about them than I do, so I'm gonna let her talk. Okay, this one is beautiful. As I said, it's a Vincent Rossini Finest Handmade Stationery and Traditional Leatherworks. Um, you can get these online. These are very expensive retail. They're probably about $40, $45. I nearly said pounds then because I just got back from England. <laughs> and they also have, um, we can only find the leather ones online, correct? We could. Okay, and this is not leather brown. This is um, covered in kind of like a... It's like a crinkly, it's like a lovely crinkly old. It's like yeah, something paper. out of Harry Potter. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, it's, it is very nice. It's like the sorting hat's been made into a book. <laughs> um, Yes, this is a gift from Alice for Christmas, December 2008. And she hasn't drawn in it yet because she's because afraid it, of ruining it. Because it's so special. But I did, I did she sacrifice a little bit at the back for you to test <laughs> it out. Because um, big issue with anything that's handmade paper is whether it's sized or not. If it's not sized and you try and paint on it with watercolours, it's going to soak up the paint like um, kitchen towel. What do they call that in America? Paper towel. Paper towel. Thank you, Alice. This one is sized and I, I just played with it a little bit. It's beautifully textured so you can get great wet on dry techniques. You can get good sparkle on water and it's just beautiful paper to paint on. Yeah, if you Lovely like rough and thick. paper. It's very rough texture. Yeah. Um, now the cheaper version of this, is the one from Hobby Lobby. It's just called a handmade watercolour paper journal from Hobby Lobby. It's 100% cotton fibre, um, 96 pages decalage, um, 200 GSM, but it feels a lot thicker. It's beautiful rough paper. It's gorgeous to work on. The only issue is it's not sized when you get it, so you have to size it yourself. And it's very easy to size paper. If you've got one of these and you try and paint on it and it soaks up water, like this, all blurry. Um, that's how I could tell it wasn't sized. You just um, make up a packet of regular household gelatin that you use for cooking. Clear gelatin. Clear gelatin. <laughs> and you paint it on the sheets and then just dry it with a hair dryer and then paint the other side of the sheets. It's a long, slow process because you have to each sheet individually so Do they don't stick together. you water down the gelatin at all? I don't, I just okay. make it up a pint. But it is a bit of an arduous process. So if I had the choice, I would go for the one that is already sized. But it is a lot more expensive. It's a lot more expensive. So, you know, this is going to be a really good deal. And they still look really nice. Not quite as beautiful as this one. It doesn't have quite as much of the staining. But, you know, you could probably do that yourself. So, yeah. If you're looking for something with really rough paper texture, if you like kind of the old-fashioned look, they have these really nice deckled edges. Mm -hmm. That might be something to look into. All right, so that is all of the sketchbooks that we have to show you today. I hope that you like this video. I hope you like seeing my mom on the channel. Hopefully I'll have some more videos with her in the future. And let me know if you have any questions about any of the sketchbooks. Let me know what your favorite sketchbook is or if there's any sketchbooks you'd like my opinion on. And yeah, thanks so much for watching you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Bye! Hello! Actually, the, the pocket size small skins open portrait. No, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Pomegranate. <laughs> <laughs>